What's up, big pimp? <laughs> good morning, good morning, folks. Good morning, good morning. Buenos días, amigos. Estamos aquí en, en la iglesia local y hoy en la mañana nos vamos a ir directo a the Fresno Mountain. Nos vamos a ir a un winter retreat de aquí hasta Fresno, ¿verdad? Así que nos vamos a ir con todos los chicos hoy y vamos a manejar unas cuatro horas. Así que uh, los vamos a ir enseñando. Les vamos a ir enseñando el camino y todo. Así que síganos, amigo. Vamos a estar yéndonos al Winter Retreat. Let's go, 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 let's go
chair. See you later. Jim. 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 Keep your eyes on the road, please. Not on me, but get about the business. I got a demon on my head. We can get it done. Oh, my Es la montaña, I'm not getting married till like three I mean, years from now. I mean, six years out of the home, bro. He's got Straight three. blast. Think about it like that. Think about you six, six years from now. I yeah, think you'll probably cool. be ready, bro. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I messed up a lot of girls' lives. <laughs> Preach. Yeah. They can mess yours up, too, huh, bro? They can mess you up, too. And Johnny Dave. <laughs> it's a two way street combo. Era, yeah. era, VOSR. VOSR, let them know. Let them know, Chim. Chim, Chim let them know. VOSR, they feel the presence in you. That's what's up, brother. I'm on north. So we're out here at the winter retreat. Uh, they just put us in our room and pretty nice out here. Yes. Pretty nice. God bless. There's a lot of trees, a lot of nature. Mm -hmm. So far, I've seen around 60, yeah. 60 to 100 people out there. And uh, we are all from Victory Outreach. Lots of brothers, lots of sisters. You know where we were checking in? From the other side. What's up, guys? What's up, brother? What's up, brother? What's up, brother? What's up, brother? What's up,
Where are you guys from? Phoenix. Phoenix. What's up guys? What Victory Outreach you guys from? On, Victory Outreach, West, West Coast, Coast Vina. Vina. He's in the building. That's right, that's Amen. right. Everybody from here is Victory Outreach. We're all Victory Outreach right here. And the line goes and goes. Winter Retreat 2023. It's my first time here, but I can tell you it's all people of God right here. And it's all Victory Outreach. The trash cans are there behind you, but please let's clean up. There's a whole table here just left. Please clean up after yourself. Be a good testimony of Jesus Christ, yourself, and your city. Come on. That's right. That's right. Is 
this is the victory outreach trip. What are you doing? <laughs> Sun. A beanie. This is Scott. Oh, it's a blanket right here, huh? Yeah, the blankets. Black, gray, and blue. You're selling them? Uh, they're for sale. Hey, Pete. Pete, show up early. Anything you got in here is for sale. Okay. Can we get them to the top? <laughs> huh? Can we get them to the top? Yep, guys. It's the support, right? Huh? It's the support. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, Bree. Do me a favor. Take a picture of this and send it to her and see if she'll wear it. Yeah? What is she? These are large, little girl. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. Jesus, that's not good. That's the James here. I don't think I can afford it. I think it's on a $30 budget. How much are these hats, sir? Oh, it's not cheap. It's not cheap. Oh, it's not cheap. Oh, it's not cheap. James said they're 35. Also, the O.S. store is open. Amen. Thank you for coming up on yourselves. Let's go. Let's head out. Just to talk to something, then you have. Get us in here. Do you want to comprar one? No. La gorra que tiene James, you know? Ahorita. El ley. It'd be nice if it said SF, huh? SF right here or SF here? Whichever one. That one was empty. Which one? Empty vessels. Pray, pray on me. Pray on me. Pray on me. What's the quick prayer, bro? You never know. Al rato, Pastor Jen might say, grab the one you like, mijo. Llévatela. La regalo. Shit. I think they should open up the sanctuary. All right, let's head out. Flow God in this place. Let this be God like the dead God of Pentecost. Lord, as we're anticipating and we're awaiting, God, Lord, for a move from heaven, Lord, we don't want to leave here the same, God, but Lord, we know, God, that you're doing something in our lives, and we're believing, God, here tonight, God, on the first night, Lord, we're believing, God, for restoration in our family, Lord, we're believing, God, for healing in our heart, Lord, we ask, God, for emotional healing, God.
Stay right there where you're at. Lift your hands, close your eyes. Seek the King of Kings here tonight. Lord Heavenly Father, we come before you, my God, asking that a YA generation, God, they come with an open heart, my God, an open mind, God, for what you want to do, God. Oh, breakthroughs are going to happen here tonight, God. We speak in the prophetic here tonight, my God, that we are not going to leave here the same, my God. Oh, that we didn't drive on that way for no reason, my God. We know that you are going to touch us, my God. Oh, God, we lift up any marriages that are in the room right now, my God. Oh, they need a fresh touch, my God. Oh, God, we pray for a unity, God. We pray for a breaking of chains, my God. Oh, God, I lift up every young adult here in the room tonight, my God. If they have lost vision, my God. Oh, God, that they're on the fence of stepping into their purpose, God. I pray that you would show up right here, my God. Right now, Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Move how you want to move, my God. Oh, come on, young adults. No other room should know how to get a hold of Jesus in this room right here. Let your neighbor hear your prayer here tonight. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus.
been with me here tonight. Jesus are not done in our generation, God. 
a generation of sensitivity to your Holy Spirit. Lord, let no voice of the world, of circumstances, be louder than the voice of heaven over our lives. Right now, God, we want to hear you clearly. So, Lord, move away all the clutter. Lord, forgive us of our sins. Cleanse us. Father, we're here at the mountain to be led by your Holy Spirit, God. We need to hear your voice. We need to feel your presence. We want to wait on your Holy Spirit, Lord. We come with expectation, Father, that as we are here gathered as a body of believers, two or more, there you are in the midst. So, Lord, we thank you for being here with us tonight. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for showing up and coming alongside us and walking this whole year with us through trials and tribulations. Walking us with us, Lord God, through new ventures, new ministries, new people have walked into our lives, and some people have walked out of our lives. But Lord, you have been right there the whole time, holding everything together, God, for the good of those who love you, God. And Lord, we're here today to say that we love you, that we need you. in Jesus' mighty name, and we all say...
friendship cause it's exaltation Now we do not play with the crew in the most I down like a patient of for being patient of for being gracious We move with the ghost What they really wanna see is give it to them But we do it anyway because we live it for them We be full of heat so we gon' rise to the top When we boil over pop, 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 pop. World telling us all to lay low But it's falling like hit by Dracos So we gon' answer the call for halos And the door breeze like Curry to claim code
us to do something up here at this moment in time. And I believe as we came up here, we're not going to leave the same. How many know that it is impossible to come into the presence of God and leave the same? I, I believe that God's going to pour out his spirit. I believe there's a spirit of revival that's in the room. I think there's going to be something that breaks out that we're going to be able to take to our cities. We're going to be able to take to our regions. We're going to be able to take to the bases. Because God's really going to move in this place. So we want to welcome everyone out to our winter retreat 2023. So let's the person next to us say, we made it. Now turn to your second option and say, we're here. Yeah. All right, you guys can make we're your way here. to your seats at this time. And as you do, smile at someone, greet someone. We came to this mountain top with the purpose here tonight. Somebody lift up their voice and lift up their hands.
Don't come on my soul Oh, don't you get shy on me with the Lord's song Cause you got a light in your side of God's arms Get up and praise the Lord oh, Come on my soul Oh, don't you get Wow, you can really sense the presence of God in the room here tonight. You know, God has already been meeting us here in our worship and our praise. And I believe that something special about to take place. Why special? 
because heaven is about to speak to us tonight. Heaven is about to speak, and the man of God that I'm going to call out, he's not only anointed to preach God's word, but I believe God placed a special oil on him to lead this generation. And you know, I think there's many people in the room that can really express their gratitude for him. You know, even me personally, I don't believe that I will be here today if it have not been for his sacrifice, his commitment, his love for the vision, his love for God, and his love for people. Yes. So come on, I believe that God is really going to speak to us tonight through his life. So come on, go away. Come on, young adults. Come on, young No, we're going to start building up this strong young adult ministry. You're going to see it at this middle retreat. This is just the beginning. Imagine this is the starting point right here. I mean, we already packed this facility out. We're going to have to see what we do next year. But I want to let you know, young adults, you better get ready. Tell your neighbor, get ready. Tell the person next to you, get ready. young adult ministry the world has witnessed or even seen. Do you believe that with me from a way that me? Do you believe that I know we're going to have an awesome time. It's going to be totally different. You don't have to worry about your young people. Some of you are just programmed, I could tell. Like when it was worship time, you were looking for the young people. Like, where are you at? Are they praising? Counting people? Are they here? Don't worry about that tonight. You get yours. Whether you're new or you've been coming for some time, have 
that expectation. And I know God's just going to turn a new gear in our ministry. And do something great in us so that he could do something great through us. Give God a praise if you believe that. And as we're building young adult ministry, we are still building student ministry. And let me tell you, the students packed this place out. It was wild last week. Let me tell you how wild it was. They said, we don't have no more rooms to give you. Come on now. They said, you used all of our beds on this facility. There's no more beds to give you. What does that tell me? We are growing. Amen. We're growing as a ministry. We're growing as a movement. And this is why we're doing this. We, we want to make room for God to raise up more leadership and also for us to grow this awesome ministry God has given us the privilege to lead or to partner with. And so I'm excited for next year, but let's not look ahead too far. Let's embrace this year. Let's embrace what God wants to do at this moment of the Are you ready? I want to read one scripture. It's been on my heart. It's been on my mind. I have been meditating on it and believing for it in my life. And not just for my life, but for the entire movement of Victory Outreach International. And I hope today it triggers something inside of you like it did in me. Also, this is my first winter retreat, bringing my baby girl, Syra, is here. She's asleep. She's going to wake up and make noise in a little bit. She snuck in. We, we really, a lot of 17-year-olds, 16-year-olds were like, can we go to the next one? We said, sorry, not this one. We're going to step out by faith and say 18 and over. We're going to see who God brings. And so you made it today. Thank God. We're going to be checking IDs on your way out. Some of you got a fake ID to get open here. Sheesh. John 14, 12. The Bible says this. These are the words of Jesus. And I hope you really put yourself in that posture like Jesus is in this room right now. Because he wants to speak to you in the way he spoke to his disciples. He wants to speak directly to you. So I hope today you have that posture and you receive these words. He starts off. Listen to what he says. He says, very truly. I'm sure when Jesus was about to talk to his disciples, they already started putting walls up. He already knew that the human mind and the human intellect will begin to put up walls of doubt and unbelief before he even speaks these words to them. He says, what I'm telling you is true. It's not cap. It's not a lie. It's not hype. I'm not trying to, trying to get you excited. I want to tell you a reality. A truth, very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing. Imagine that. He says this on top of that, and they will do even greater things than these. Because I am going to the Father. Give God praise for that word right there. I am going to do greater things. Tell the person next to you, you're going to do greater things. Tell the person on the other side of you, you are going to do greater things. One more time strong, let's say it to ourselves and to our future. I'm going to do greater things. Take your seat over this place. The title of my message tonight is greater things. Here the scripture we're reading tonight is a very pivotal moment in the ministry of Jesus. Jesus is coming to the end of his earthly ministry. And he's speaking to the generation that's going to run with the ministry that he pioneered. He's speaking to the leaders that are going to carry the mantle that he passes unto them and finish the work that he began. What I love about Jesus is he's, he, he's not just concerned about finishing well, he's also concerned about setting the people up next to him to finish well themselves. 
And he begins to speak to his disciples towards the end of his ministry and begins to encourage them and excite them and envision them that though he leaves, the work will continue. Though he's going home to the Father, the miracles won't stop happening. Though he's finishing his time here on earth, heaven's still going to operate on earth. Because I'm sure they were here and they were listening to the words of Jesus and questioning whether or not the moves will continue to happen. Whether or not the miracles will continue to happen. Whether or not souls will continue to get saved. The sick people will continue to get healed. The, the demons will continue to be casted out. That's it. That's it. Jesus tells them, listen, I am going to go with the Father, but the work's still going to happen. That's right. Miracles are still going to happen. The works I have been doing, you will do as well. That's right. That's right. And then he throws some more on top of it. He says, you're going to do greater things than I've done. That's the vocabulary of a leader. That's right. That's right. A secure, healthy leader wants the next generation to do greater things than they've done. But a sick, unhealthy leader doesn't want people to go higher than them. Talk An unhealthy, me. unwhole, poisoned leader will not want the next generation to do bigger things than they've done. Talk to me. Because they'll lose celebration from the life that they live. And so subconsciously, they'll want to let people shoot high, but just don't go higher than me. Right. Ouch. Just don't go beyond. Just don't talk bigger than I'm talking. Just don't do things bigger than I have done. Don't start sticking your chest out too much or talking wow. too big. But Jesus isn't that kind of leader. Jesus is the kind of leader that says, I've done great things, but I'm believing God to do greater things in you and the people around me and the people coming up after me. I want to see God go from glory to glory, from level to level to do bigger things than he's done before. Come on. So we hear a healthy leader talking to his disciples as he's also speaking to you here tonight. There's a lot of denominations that don't correctly exegete the scripture. And the things that they say when they look at the scripture is that vocabulary was only for the disciples. Yeah. They say that's only for the apostles. They're only going to do the works Jesus has done. Mm -hmm. and, and that they're only going to operate in the miracle working power that Jesus operated in. And they say it's not for you. Wow. wow. But history books and the ministry of victory outreach tells us something different Amen. we have seen the miracle working power of god in our ministry for 55 plus years so i'm sorry it doesn't matter how educated a person may be or how many degrees they may have you cannot convince me that the miracle working power of god has stopped with the apostles no 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 i've seen it happen in our ministry i've seen it happen with my very own eyes i'm that with me. Give God praise right now. <laughs> Jesus tells them as he tells you tonight, you will do the things that he has done. What are some things Jesus has done? He's walked in authority. Yeah. He's casted out demons. He prayed for the sick. He healed the sick. He confronted religious leaders. He took dominion. He forgave his enemies. And he finished the work that he began. He took back the God-given authority that was stripped from mankind through Adam. And he restored it unto you and I. And he modeled to you and I how we could walk in authority. And be kingdom men and kingdom women here on earth. And he's speaking to them and telling them what I have done, you will do as well. Because though he is going to be with the Father, the Spirit was going to come and fill the, fill the body of Christ. And he tells them, the works I've done, you will do as well. Did you know the power of God is ready and able at all times to heal the sick and cast yes. out demons? Yes. 
It's here Amen. to raise the dead. It is here to do the works. The Holy Spirit, excuse me, is here to yes. do the works yes. that Jesus has done. Yes. Amen. He fills the room of every room we walk into just as he is filling this room here tonight. Amen. He lives in us and he's ready to heal, save, and deliver those we encounter as we walk through this journey of life. Can you say amen to that? Amen. 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 So Jesus speaks to them and he begins to envision them that they will do the things that he has done. Amen. I like some other things that I see Jesus do. So some things he's done. Number one is he's endured adversity. Yes. Jesus faced much adversity. Through it all, he endured every single pain and every single struggle that he encountered in life. Yeah. He also carried his cross through difficulty, hardship, through celebration, and through discouragement. He carried the cross and finished his race. So he tells them what I've done you will do. And then he says one thing on top of that. You're going to do greater things. Let me talk to you about that word, greater. It's a Greek word, and it's actually a word. It's called megas. Isn't that interesting? I was studying, and I felt the Spirit of God prompt me to look that word up. It's, it's megas. Say megas. Megas. He tells them, you're going to do megas. Greater things. What that word means, it means mass and weight. It means compass and extent, large and spacious. It me it's a measure in height. It means long, not only wide, but it's also long things that we're going to do. This expansion of territory that's going to happen. Amen. It speaks of number and quantity that numerous, large and abundant amounts are going to come from your life. It speaks of intensity and, 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 and heightening of degrees and effort and afflictions and emotions of the mind. It speaks of bigger things that are going to happen. So Jesus tells them, you are going to do bigger things, greater things, larger things, more numerous things. Your extent of ministry is going to go further than you've witnessed it before. That happened through the disciples, but it's still happening today. Jesus' ministry had a geographical extension, but the disciples' ministry geographical expansion was further than that when they were serving alongside with Jesus. And so the greater things that are going to happen are not so much greater than Jesus in quality as much as they are in quantity. That the ministry Jesus entrusts to you and I is going to expand further. And there's going to be more quantity of miracles and expansion than we've ever seen before. Amen. Greater in extent. Jesus seen that happen with his disciples. And we are seeing that happen before our very own eyes today. Amen. We're seeing God bring an expansion to our ministry. Yes. And I'm believing that through this room, we're going to see megas things happen. Hallelujah. We've been talking about mega for the last couple of years, but I also want to talk to you about megas here tonight. Because there are greater things that lie ahead for you and I here tonight. Can you clap your hands if you could sense it and you could feel it that there's megas things that are going to happen through your life. This is an important time in our ministry as it was with the disciples because we're in a time of transition. But God is raising up another generation Amen. and the generation is here in the room tonight. Amen. And there's greater things that God has in store for each and every one of you who believe it here today. But here's a sad part here tonight as I talk to you about greater things. Some of us put walls up already like it can't happen for you. The enemy has programmed people to not believe that they could do great things. Many people live under shackles of limitation. They live under walls that they cannot do great things. They cannot be great things because the sad story is some people here tonight, you grew up in a home where big, doing big things wasn't allowed. 
and you came up under voices of leadership who didn't lift you up, but actually pushed you down. And I'm not talking about church leadership. I'm talking not just about church leadership. I'm also talking about educational systems. Right, right, talking right. about family groups and people groups yeah. we surround ourselves with. Many yeah. people have been living under the shackles of limitation. And so I tell you, like Jesus told his disciples, very truly, you will do great things. Very truly, you are going to do megas. You're going to do great things. And it's important that we get this inside of us. And we begin to receive it and believe it so we could achieve everything that God has laid up for us. Because there's some great things he has for you. There's some big moves that God is going to make through your life. I, I could feel it brewing in the room tonight. I, I could sense it happening in the heart of men. I could sense it happening in different cities and different countries. I could sense it happening in this place tonight. But there's some megas things that are going to happen through us. Hallelujah. In Acts 2.17, the Bible says that in the last days, God will pour out his spirit on all people. And that your sons and daughters will prophesy, your young men will see visions, on, and your old on. men will dream dreams. Yay! The end. Near the end is when the greatest things happen. Yes. It's when the end is near that the greatest miracles take place. Hallelujah. The most dreams are revealed. The most visions are revealed. And I believe where the greatest messages are going to be told. The Bible also says in 1 Corinthians 2, 9, No eye has seen, nor ear has heard, what no human mind has conceived, the things God has prepared for those who love Him. Amen. There are some people, you hear those words, and you feel like it's for them, and it's for her, and you can't believe it's for you. Right. And here's a true story today. There's a lot of people who operate in false humility. They have false humility and they live a life of apathy and complacency. You know why? Because they say, I don't want to do too much. I know I'm called of God, but I don't want to step on people's toes. That's why I don't go hard. I know God has a plan for my life, but I don't want to get out of line. I don't want to step out of my lane. I don't want to do too much. And so they have this vocabulary and they have a mantle on their shoulders. They're called to be a team member. They're called to be a leader. They're called to take a city. They're called to take a country. And they carry this mantle. But they don't operate according to the mantle because they're so caught up on what people think. Yeah. Sadly, it's true that many people become people pleasers rather than God pleasers. Oh. Ouch. And so they, they carry this mantle and they have this responsibility in life, but they're so caught up thinking about what people think, they stop thinking about what God thinks. Oh my God. And I hear it all throughout the country. I hear it coming out of many leaders' mouths. That I'm called, I'm chosen, I know there's a plan of God in my life, but I just don't want to get out of my lane. I'm going to tell you, if you stay in the lane you're in, you're not in the lane God wants you to be in. God has a perfect will for your life, and if you don't get in it, I came to let you know you're not going to be happy, you're not going to be content, you'll carry that title, but you won't have a zeal living in you. And I came to give you a warning tonight, if there's no sense of passion, and there's no sense of drive to do something new, be careful, you're heading for a backsliding. A scary place to be having a mantle of leadership on our life, but in a decline in life. Yeah. When a yeah. leader is in decline and when a leader isn't operating in the mantle of God that's placed upon their shoulders, you know what happens is you take everybody with you on a decline. I wonder how many more dreams would be awoken in this generation if you decided in your heart to do every single thing God wants to do within your life. I wonder how big of a ministry you would have if you made a decision here on this mountaintop. God, I'm going after everything you have for me. I'm getting exactly where you want me to be. I'm going to serve you and give you glory with what you entrusted unto me. If people don't see it, That's why I'm living the way that I'm living. That's why I serve the way that I serve. That's why I 
He wants you to praise Him with your life. Yes. He wants you to maximize the time and the giftings that He's placed within you. But we need to get in the perfect will that He has in store for you and I. And we need to be good stewards with the life He's given us. See, when I talk about stewardship, you guys think I'm talking about finances. I'm talking about your life. There's some people that are good stewards with finances, but bad stewards with their lives. The tithing report looks good, but your life's out of line. <laughs> Ouch. And God looks at both. Both are important. We need to be good stewards with the mantle and the calling that God has placed upon our life. Because here's the truth. Nobody's going to be there to give an account with you. When your time here on earth is done and you have to go before God and give an account for your life, he's not going to hear your excuses. He's not going to call those people you don't want to step on their toes for. He's not going to take your excuses. And maybe people are like, man, that's a good excuse. All right, go ahead. Do it. But God doesn't accept excuses. He's going to ask you, what did you do with the life I gave you, with the gifts I've given you, with the talents I placed inside of you? Who benefited from it and who got glory from it? Another problem I see within a generation is there's a lot of people who want to give themselves glory with their gift and not God glory with their gift. Ouch. The gift Ouch. God gave you is not so you could get popular, <laughs> for you to be rich, and for you to be yeah. famous. It's for you to serve the people He's placed around you. Yeah. Can you clap like that? He's given you that gift so that He could get glory from it. Yes. And so people could be saved from it. Yes. And that the body could be edified by it. Yes. That's what the gifts and the talents God gives us. It's to serve. Yes. God, if we want to be great in the kingdom of God, we have to learn to steward and we have to learn to serve. Can you say that with me? I'm going to serve. I'm going to serve. serve. It's about stewarding and serving that which God has given us. See, we have something to give. I don't know what the world has told you, what people have told you, what the enemy has told you, but every single person has been given something in this room tonight. I know maybe you don't see it yet, but believe me when I tell you, there's a gift inside of you. God puts different gifts in different people and he brings us together that we could be a blessing to him and, and serve the people he's placed around us. He even says in scripture that if you want a gift, pray for the gift. There's some gifts some people desire, pray for the gift you desire. And the gift giver will give you the gift. And you're going to need to follow the destiny he has for your life. But every single person today has something to give. The important thing is you realize that and you actually believe that God could use your life. Many people believe that they can't do things. They believe that they're not enough and they don't have enough because they've been listening to voices that are sent from the enemy and not from God. And listening to reports that contradict the word of God. Our belief system is, is not based off what we hear on media. And our belief system is not based on what we see on social media. There's a, a, in the end times, there's going to be a lot of false prophets. Yeah. There's going to be a lot of people with false doctrines and spiritual <clears throat> wickedness that's been spoken through media platforms. How many of you see it and you hear it? Yeah. It's everywhere right now. And it's important that our belief system is not based on what we hear on media. It's based on what we read in the Holy Book. Yeah. Our belief system and our filter of beliefs is in the Word of God. It's in the Scripture. It's in the breath of God. What He speaks over our life. In Philippians 4.13, He says you could do all things 
In Romans 8, 37, it says you are more than a conqueror. In Acts 1, 8, it says that the Holy Spirit will empower you to be a witness to the ends of the world. We need to believe that. We need to receive that tonight that we can retrieve everything God has for us. Amen. Can you say amen to that today? Amen. Amen. When I think about someone who wanted greatness, I can't help but to think about the prophet Elisha. Yeah. That when the mantle has been put on his shoulders and then and he was taking the mantle from the next, from the generation before, he asked him, what do you want from me? He says, I want double. <laughs> Talk about somebody who didn't want to maintain the ministry, but wanted to multiply the ministry. Amen. Did you know God expects multiplication out of us? God doesn't want us to just manage the gifts he's given us and the talents he's placed within us. He wants us to multiply them. We're going to read it in a second. But Elisha said, I want double. I want more. I want a ministry of multiplication. I don't want a ministry of management. He says, I want to take what God has given me and I want to multiply it that I could give him more glory. I want to see him do double the miracles, make double the moves, reach more souls, reach more people, have a greater impact, and save this generation. He believed, like I believe, what was the roof for the generation before becomes for the floor for this generation today. He expected great things. I'm expecting great things from this young adult ministry. That's why I'm excited for the VOI alumni ministry that we're about to launch in this year. We're going to launch it officially. We're going to hit this thing hard. I'm excited because that means greater things are happening. I'm excited when I hear about the college and university ministry that we're launching in the young adult ministry. I get excited when we talk about VOI athletes. We are going to reach the athletes all over Victory Outreach International. And also we're going to reach further than that. In every single sports community, we're going to have people of faith being testimonies and witnesses of the power of God. Come on. What's happening, greater things are unfolding on a global level within our ministry. Amen. But it's vital for you and I tonight that we desire greatness. Yes. The disciples desired greatness. Did you know that? As a matter of fact, they began to have conversation with one another who would be the goat in the kingdom of heaven. This goat talk's been going on for years, all right? We know Jesus is the goat. We'll always be the goat. Amen. But I think it's, it's a healthy thing for leaders to want to be great. Come on. Not so much it's an unhealthy thing for leaders to want to be great. And the reason for why we want to be great is not for self-glory, but it's for God's glory. We want to praise Him with our life. But the disciples began to talk about greatness in Luke 9.46. It says an argument amongst the disciples began to break out about which one of them would be the greatest. In Matthew 18.1, watch this, all of them wrote about this. Matthew wrote, at that time the disciples came to Jesus saying, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? In Mark 6, 9, 33, 36, it says they came to Capernaum. And when he was in the house, he asked them, Jesus asked them, what were you arguing about on the road? But they kept quiet because on the way they had argued about who was the greatest. Sitting down, Jesus called the 12 and said, Anyone who wants to be first must be the very last yes. and the servant of all. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Kingdom greatness is about serving and stewarding. Jesus says in my kingdom, if you want to be great, you must be a servant. He said in my kingdom, you must serve the sinner and you must also learn to serve the saints. And you must learn to steward that which I, which I have given unto you. Amen. Steward the gifts God put inside of us. There's actually a parable where Jesus talks about stewardship. And it's found in Matthew 25. I want you to turn there with me. 25 verse 14. And he begins to give a parable 
about an undisclosed time period where Jesus is delegating responsibility to the disciples to steward for his kingdom and putting on them a weight of responsibility that he also places upon each and every person here tonight. He says this in verse 14, for the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. See, here's important here today. When the owner of a house was going on a long journey, he would give his servants responsibility and the care of his property was placed on their shoulders. He would give them money, money to the servants before he left. And here he talks about talents. Talents is equating to a year's wage that he gave unto his servants. The Bible says that one servant got five talents. In verse 21, it says he brought back 10 talents. To the other servant in verse 23, he gave two talents and that servant brought back four talents. What is that? Double. Multiplication. That's double what they got from their master. They gave back double to their master. But the Bible tells us about one servant. Which servant got one talent and he only came back with one talent? He buried it. And he tells his master, the reason why I only came back with one talent is because I know you a hard drilling master and you're rough. He begins to tell his master that you're, 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 you're basically a mean master. And I feared you. And so instead of investing it, I went and buried it. Because I wanted to give you back what's yours. Oh. The Bible says that this servant was wicked. And he said, throw him into the darkness where there is weeping and gnashing of the teeth. Yeah. Sounds kind of rough, right? I don't want to hear those words when I go to my master. <laughs> but each of us, like these servants, will go before our master as well. And we'll be asked the question, what did you do with what God gave you? Because Jesus has gone to prepare a place for us. And he's given us talents, money, energy, and abilities in one day. Like these servants, you and I will stand before him and give an account for what he has entrusted unto us. It's a real sobering thing because every single person must give an account. And I believe when we give an account, we're going to hear the words Jesus spoke unto his servants. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Listen to what Jesus told the ones that multiplied that which.
go, Kyle. You got a cameraman right here. You got your cameraman right here, brother. Cowboy right here. Got the cowboy follow.
James, little James. You still got those skates though, look. Oh, I haven't got no skates yet, I gotta do it. What's up, James? We're gonna walk around. We're gonna introduce me to some brothers. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know who to introduce you to. Okay, I'm gonna get in there again. Okay? That's right, brother. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, I fell down earlier. A little hard, huh? Go yeah. sideways.
Watch out, watch out. Got a moving face. <laughs> oh, oh, look at she got the hang of it. She knows how to skate. Is this your first time? <laughs> oh, she got the rhythm. trip going bud? Going good, it's going good. Why do you want to tell Billy? Billy? Thank you. God bless you. Yeah, how about Perez? Huh? How about Perez? Perez is so good. We're actually doing it big. We're going to do big things for Jesus. And Willie G. Willie, what's up? You missed out, my boy. God bless you. Bro. Next year, Willie. Next Oh, you got it, you got it, you got it. Baby steps. Oh, help her out, brother. Nice, nice, oh, nice, LA, huh? Hey, what's up, brother? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus! 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 Jesus!